Hello and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blog cast. This is episode 318. My name is Emily Rainbow Davis. Thank you for listening to the blog cast. I am back in Queens and uh, still don't have a perfect podcast set up, but I'm working on it. So thank you for hanging in. If echoey drives you crazy, it will be over eventually. Uh, yeah. So um, today's blog is about a theater legend and how he was talked about after his death. And uh, why don't I just read it to you? It is called That Thing Playbill Said About Peter Brook. If you are not a theater nerd, you may not be aware of the stature that Peter Brook, theater luminary who recently died at age 97, had with us, theater folk. His book, The Empty Space, is the sort of text your theater friends are likely to wax rhapsodic about. It has changed a lot of people's lives and inspired many a theater maker to make more artful, high-minded art. The empty space encourages us to be both simpler and more exacting in our work. He talked about how theater is as simple as an empty space in which something happens, and also you better really think about what happens in there, especially for your audience. It felt like Brooke was always challenging the field to boil itself down to a more essential state. He was our theatrical philosopher. He held the ideals for the field. If you got distracted by all the nonsense of show business, you could always turn to Brooke for a dose of idealism and aspiration. I know many a theater maker who, when feeling despair about what to do next about their theater career, would reread The Empty Space to refresh their sense of purpose. He was a beacon for a theater of art. I have often been surprised when people who I imagine to have sold out, who don't seem to care about the art part, who seem to be just leaning hard into the business or entertainment, suddenly pull out their copy of The Empty Space and get dreamy looks on their faces. Brooke was good for the theater's soul, I think. All of this is why I found it kind of hilarious that when he died, Playbill tweeted only one thing about Peter Brook, which was that he had three Tony Awards. Of all the things there are to say about Brook, his Tony Awards seem to me to be the absolutely least consequential. Of all the many ways he mattered, The Tonys may have mattered least. Now, it is a credit to the Tonys that they managed to honor an artist like Peter Brook at some point, but awards are almost always behind the curve. Like, the MacArthur Genius Grant went to Lin-Manuel Miranda, not in his early days when he was lugging his keyboard around for his first musical, but years after Hamilton became a hit. Awards often miss the genius moment, and I don't even know what Brooks Tony Awards are for, and I don't care. I have some guesses, and most of them are probably from his early career. Cool. Pat yourself on the back, Tony Awards. You chose well that year. Those years? I don't know. Doesn't matter. Not to most of us. Not to all the theater geeks clutching their copies of the empty space to their chests. Peter Brook made some exciting theater. He made shows that people talk about decades after they happened. I've seen work of his that I loved and work that I thought really stank. And it's not as simple as the early work is good and the late work is bad. I saw a fairly recent show of his a couple of times because I know one of the actors and it was so simple and full all at once. Then in the same period, I saw a show of his that I just didn't care for at all. 
so I just tried to forget it as soon as I saw it. I respect his failures, somehow. Like any artist, Brooke wasn't a genius all the time. But his importance to us as a field is as someone who held the line for art, not just some guy who won three Tony Awards one time. We don't have many of those line holders left. We lost a beacon. We lost a lighthouse. And the little extra note that I put at the end of this one was about Helen Shaw's article about Peter Brook. Uh, If you don't know Helen Shaw, she's, I think, one of the best writers that we have about theater, probably in the country. Um, But she writes here in New York, so we are lucky to have her. She just changed publications, or she is in the process of changing publications. She was writing for New York Magazine, and I believe she works for The New Yorker now or will do soon anyway she's fantastic if you want to see some really incredible theater criticism uh check her out and then also her piece about peter brook was really fantastic it was it was um i I feel like it honored his his you know his place in the american theater or in theater in general in the world in the global theater Um, and also acknowledged, you know, some of the complications that surround uh, a a luminary in this field. So um, if you want to read more about Peter Brook, I recommend checking that out. There's a link in the blog. I can link to it in the show notes also, if you'd like. Uh, Yeah, so uh, also if you feel like reading The Empty Space, let me know what you think, if you haven't read it before. If you're a theater person, I'm going to guess you've read it before. <laughs> it's, a, it's, a, it's a foundational text. Uh, so, 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 song. Uh, part of the reason I, I wasn't able to do a blogcast last week, um, I did a rebroadcast last week, uh, for those of you who did not catch that. Um, and that was partly because I, have got, I got so stuck on the song for what I was going to do for this post. Um, and also I just was not in a, a place that was convenient to, or at all feasible <laughs> for recording. Um, but also like, because I couldn't have done it really easily because I could not figure out what song to do. Um, I had, uh, so I thought, Oh, I know I'm talking about Peter book as a lighthouse. Uh, I'll do a song about a lighthouse. So I did a lot of searching for lighthouse songs, and there are a lot of them. I think songwriters love a lighthouse metaphor. Just love it. (laughs) And often that metaphor is a little bit on the nose. (laughs) The one that really cracked me up, and I almost did it because I found it so kind of funny, is there, it's a, it's a gospel, country gospel. I don't know what we call this genre necessarily. Um, it's a country song that turns out to be a gospel song, of course. Um, you know, where this guy is describing how this lighthouse saved his life and what he, you know, where would his ship be if it weren't for the lighthouse? And it's, you know, you, you already know what he's talking about, right? The metaphor is very clear. It's a gospel group what is he talking about? And it, the song is hilarious because, you know, they go through this whole description, this whole metaphor of the lighthouse. And then at the end, they're just like, Jesus is the lighthouse. And Jesus is the lighthouse. You're like, right. I, I, really? Wow. I'm shocked. I had no idea. <laughs> anyway, I found it very funny. But also like, um, you know, it's not, I think it's meaningful to to many people. So I don't want to be like, Isn't this funny? And there's like not a way to do it. I think you have to be earnest maybe when you sing this kind of song. Anyway, it's a delightful song, actually. There's something very like these four guys just like singing their hearts out about a lighthouse. Um, So, but I couldn't. I just was like, nah. And then I discovered a a Canadian girl band called Girl, G-R-L. Um, who are incredibly popular in Canada. I kind of love that there are Canadian girl bands and various other artists who I have literally never heard of. 
And yet they have, you know, millions and millions of listens, views, etc. Um, so I was looking at that song, but it also was like a little too full of uh, story and uh, sentiment, sen- sentimentality that had n- sort of nothing to do with this particular moment for me. And then uh, I was trying to learn this Brazilian song. Um, so uh, let me back up for a second because I was like, okay, all of these songs that are like about lighthouses in English are just too, like, just too literal almost. Like too, the, the, the metaphor is just like right Got right there. So I thought, oh, I know. I will find out what the word for lighthouse is in different languages, and I will find a song about a lighthouse in, you know, French or Spanish or Portuguese or whatever. Uh, and and that felt in line with Peter Brook because he moved his whole operation to France. That's, I don't know. I don't remember when exactly it was, but, you know, he's a, a British theater maker and decided to work in France, uh, sometimes in French, um, which is an interesting choice. And it's not like English theater is not well, you know, respected or supported. Um, so his choice to, to sort of create a layer of distance is, I think, very interesting. Anyway, so I decided I'd, I'd look for songs in French and Spanish and Portuguese and uh, almost learned a Brazilian, I'm assuming, song. It's in Portuguese. It's beautiful. I really like it, but I cannot play it to save my life. So um, so I've ended on this Spanish song, uh, which I also enjoy quite thoroughly. And at first I thought, oh, is it in Portuguese? Because it's the two recordings that I have of it feature uh, Brazilian artists Um, but it is in fact in Spanish (laughs) and turns out it's actually not the word for lighthouse. (laughs) So the word for lighthouse in Spanish is Faro, F-A-R-O. Um, and I did find a few songs that are the feature Faro and, uh, it's similar in Italian is the same as Faro. And then in Portuguese, it's Farol, uh, but Farolito, which I thought was a little lighthouse, actually means streetlight. So, I mean, that's kind of beautiful, right? Like a streetlight is a little lighthouse in your street. Um, so here I have done little lighthouse <laughs> or streetlight, really. Uh, so uh, it somehow, somehow it feels right. I don't know exactly why that sort of mistranslation or... Uh, having a kind of separation of language and meaning and I don't know. So I'm going to sing Farolito for you here a little in a little bit. Meanwhile, thank you so much for listening. If you like the podcast, please tell someone about it. Like, review, subscribe. If you would like to support the podcast, the blogcast, or the blog, uh, you can join Patreon, patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. There's also Kofi, there's PayPal. All those links are in the show notes. And I thank you for your ears and your listening support and all the stuff. There is one more episode of The Dragoning to come out and then the season will end. So if you want to be in the In the coming out stage, now is the moment. You're, of course, welcome to listen to all of it once it's all out and it will stick around and it's not going anywhere. So, you know, no rush. But if you want to be a part of the current moment, you can. Do it now. And uh, I believe that is all I need to tell you. So I'm going to play you Farolito on ukulele. Here it is. Thank you.
me has visto llorando llamar a su puerta sin llevar más que una canción un pedazo de mi corazón sin llevar más nada que un beso friolento travieso amargo y dulce So